More information comes about VI Pass Holder Days at Disney World. A new version of Magic Band comes to the Disney Wish, and we left the most magical place on Earth to go check out Food and Wine Festival at another Central Florida theme park. All of this on episode 143 of the Mickey File Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to episode, what is it, 143? Yep, 143. Of the Mickey File Podcast. I'm Scott, and with me, as always, is my lovely wife, Karen. Hello, everybody. So we haven't been to Disney since TDC. Is that right? No, we went that one afternoon. Yeah, the one afternoon to Animal Kingdom or morning. Right. So instead, we went to Bush Gardens last weekend. I know. Which for pass holders, we don't do very often. No, we don't. And we probably need to. <laughs> Every time we go, we talk about how much we enjoy it, Mm -hmm. and then we don't go back. Well, because things get in the way, because we're going over to Disney. (laughs) Well, it is. I mean, we've got (laughs) friends that are coming into town, so we go see our friends, like we are going to do this weekend. Exactly. I'm so excited. (laughs) So excited. With some pretty cool podcast content coming, if things go the way we have discussed. There's a teaser. I think it'll be fun. I think it will be fun. So, yeah, we're going to see our friend Jen and her kids will be there. Yes. Tate and Harper. Uh Uh-huh. So, I'm looking forward to it. A couple of days just away from all the stuff here. Yes. I think it'll be very therapeutic for us. Yeah. (laughs) And a rest before... You get our season really goes crazy. Yeah. Starting on Tuesday. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, looking forward to it though. I am too. So I just it's like all of a sudden it's here. You know. (laughs) Right. And then the weekend's gonna be over. (laughs) Yeah. It always happens that way. Well, we're going over Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm Mm-hmm. So we'll still have Monday to like just chill out. Yes. Which is also important. Yes, it is. You have to. So, yeah, a little bit of news today. Mm-hmm. And uh, not a lot because, well, as it turns out, it's been most of a week, but yeah, we did record late last week. So, right. So we actually did give it a full week. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, there actually just wasn't a ton of news, though. There wasn't, because there was a lot last week. Yeah. It's usually how they do it. Right. So, so let's kick off the news. All right. My Disney Experience is now asking for seating preference options on check-in for dining reservations. When So, you like, for example, you can ask for... N- no specific preference, a booth, a table. There's different options available depending on the restaurant associated. The example they gave was Garden Grill, so it was booth or table. Um, it does state on there that seating preferences are not guaranteed and may affect wait time. Well, yeah, of course. But I think it's very cool that you can actually ask for preferences. I guess. I mean, trying to think if I've ever, like, have we ever even actually asked for a seat? Like, yeah. I don't think so. I, I have. I've like, can you not just put us like, like right in the middle? I would prefer to be against a wall or against a window. I've asked for preferences like okay. that. Now, is this when you make the reservation no. or when you check in? When you check in. Okay. Well. I think it's kind of neat. I guess we'll get to see how that works this weekend. Yes, we will. It seems like one of those IT changes that is wildly unimportant. 
and that they have a lot of actual issues they could have fixed before they implemented this, but let's see how it works. Yeah. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. Um, Walt Disney World will be hosting the first ever Once Upon a Wish party during World Princess Week in August. It's for Make-A-Wish kids and their families. I think it's really cool. They do a lot for Make-A-Wish. They do, for sure. And having this Once Upon a wish party i think is really neat so here's all dressed up so here's one thing about that yes we have had the license plate so the state of florida i mean if you've been to disney anywhere near a parking lot or a hotel parking lot you've seen them right but the state of florida did a 50th anniversary license plate for disney right and we've had it for i don't know a year no Year and a half? Year and a half. Year and a half. Uh-huh. I didn't know until just recently that the money, because like schools do them and um, yeah, different organizations, right. if you get enough pre-sales, they'll make a um, license plate a license design. plate designed for you mm-hmm. and, and then the money goes to your organization. So I was trying to figure out like who was getting the money for Disney. So it's going to make a wish. Right. I didn't know that until very recently. Yes, and now because the 50th anniversary celebration is open over, they're changing the design. When you go to re- renew it again, it's, Are they? it's becoming a make-a-wish design. I had heard a rumor at one point that they were considering doing Universal this time. Oh. With the idea of everybody who was going to pay for the Disney plate did it mm-hmm. because of the 50th. So, you know, these plates are good for 10 years. Right. So spread the wealth a little bit, try to get the Universal fans and the mm-hmm. Gatorland fans. and <laughs> Legoland fans. Yeah. I, I mean, there are Legoland fans. Yes, there are. I'm not sure there are a lot of people running around wearing <laughs> Gatorland spirit jerseys, <laughs> but, or with, Antenna toppers on their car, you know, Yes, but, and no offense to the fine people at Gatorland. Yeah, no offense at all. It is an authentic Florida attraction. Yes. That brings back the Florida of yesteryear Mm -hmm. with roadside attractions. (laughs) Not unlike the entire theming of Dinosaur World or whatever in Dino Land. What do they call it? Dino Land, right? Dino Land, yeah. Yeah, Dino Land USA. Mm -hmm. You know, same kind of idea. Yeah. Roadside attraction. Exactly. So, anyway, so, okay, so they're doing just a Make-A-Wish plate. Right, yes. Um, I think that is a mistake because I'm far less likely to buy a Make-A-Wish plate than I am a Disney or Universal or... Right. But at least just, we, but, but we get to keep ours for 10 years, so that's all. We do, yeah. I don't have to worry about it for a long time. Right. I'm just saying... Um. I don't know. Maybe I'll be surprised, but I think that they were selling a lot more because of that Disney logo than they were oh, yeah. for Make a Wish. I, I believe you're correct. Like on I that. said, we had them for over a year before I found out it was going to Make a Wish. Right. So, anyway. So Tina Turner passed away on May 24th. She lived in Switzerland. She was 83 years old. Um passed away from she had a long illness they didn't disclose what the long illness was so i don't know why it surprised me she was 83 because i mean she was around in the 60s i know i just i actually thought she was older (laughs) um so i've been trying to figure out what the disney connection was right Mm -hmm. like i'm looking at my uh buddy Scott Gustin's Twitter feed right now and he's got links to stories about it. I know what the Disney connection is. Mm-hmm. They got that cover of her and Ike doing a whole lot of love on the Cruella soundtrack. Yes. Boom. There's my Disney connection. <laughs> she does have some additional Disney connections, but that's, that's the main one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the one for me. So, but she was, she was an incredible artist. So, She's a very talented woman who yes. um, I never really got into. I get that. 
It just wasn't. It wasn't your thing. Uh, I was way less into that kind of R&B back when she was a thing. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. There we go. Kind of like Duran Duran. I have a greater appreciation now. Could stand Duran Duran in 1985. I still don't really have a whole lot of... Uh. No, now they come on the radio. I'm like, man, they were really good. <laughs> like, they weren't the cure, <laughs> but they were really good. Okay. I just told a lot about myself with that. Yes. They weren't the cure, but they were good. <laughs> the cure was awesome. I believe. Changed my mind. Okay. More VI pass holder days information has come available. Okay. Um, there's a Wally and Eve magic shot that's going to be available at the Discovery Island and Animal Kingdom. <laughs> I know. Is there, is there a less appropriate place on property for that shot? I mean, I guess in front of the Haunted Mansion okay. or the Hall of Presidents. Okay. What do Wally and Eve have to do with Animal Kingdom? I'm not quite sure. But I think they're just trying to get people to Animal Kingdom. I guess. I mean, I can see putting them in Tomorrowland for yeah. reasons. I can no, see I can putting see Tomorrowland them and Epcot. And a lot of places in the front of Epcot. Right. I... <sighs> If you gave me a map of Disney World and said, find the worst place to put this Photoshop. <laughs> I think that would be it. <laughs> you can make an argument for anywhere in Hollywood Studios, just about. Right. Not, not Toy Story or Star Wars, but, you know, in the. Right. I just don't. I, 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 my opinion is because of the one a couple down. It's a magic shot. You're going to be taking a picture basically in front of the tree of life and they're going to throw Wally and Eve in on it. I, I don't know what else to say. I don't either. I don't understand this. But I truly think. Because of this next reason is the new Figment AP magnet is going to be available May 31st through June 30th at the Creation Shop at Epcot. So everyone's going to be going to Epcot to get their magnet. Well, let me rephrase that. Every annual pass holder is going to Epcot to go get their magnet. And I think they're trying to disperse where things are going on. It's my opinion. I guess. I mean, they've been through the magnet thing at Creation Shop and mouse gear and whatever mm -hmm. for years. They, right. they know what to expect with that. Now they do have more annual pass holders again, but. Right. I think that's, that's why I think they're doing I it. I just. But. It's just. <laughs> I, whoever made that decision, you got to wonder if they've ever been to Animal Kingdom or seen Wally. This is the picture? Like, just on a sidewalk in the woods? Yeah. That could be anywhere. With a monorail. Maybe the, maybe that's not on. Maybe that's just the logo for VI Pass Holder. That's just the logo for the VIP, VI Pass Holder. Because that's, yeah, that's just the logo of it. And look, you can tell. It's going to be the look over here and act surprised. And you're going to be, I don't have say. to act surprised. You've picked the dumbest <laughs> magic shot in the history of magic shots for Animal Kingdom. <laughs> and I'm just surprised you guys did this and are proud of it. I just, good God, man. <laughs> I'd rather have the Mandalorian in Batu. <laughs> And you know how I feel about that. I know. You've expressed, you've expressed it. For 40 years, Disney was all about the escape the outside world and the storytelling. And that's all you ever hear Bob Iger talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Still is telling, our, telling the stories, telling stories. What the hell is the story of Wally and Eve in Animal Kingdom? Like... 
This right. really bothers me. This really bothers me. This is weird. I'm boycotting this. Well, it's like Hollywood Brown Derby. It's dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently we're going there for lunch, so I don't know where you're going to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go to either Steakhouse 71 or... Um, Geyser Point and get a burger and then just bring it in my backpack to <laughs> Hollywood Brown Derby and eat it there. <laughs> I, honestly, I'm probably going to have a Cobb salad because it's like the thing. They invented the Cobb salad, right? Yeah. So, it's a really good Cobb salad. <laughs> I have this weird thing about hard-boiled eggs in my salads. You throw those on top with a little bit of ham, and I am, like, all over it. <laughs> I swear. Like, it's weird. And mine are always on the side. So, um, yeah. All right. There is additional um, VI pass holder. An additional 10% discount will be available on select dining and up to 20%. And merchandise purchases up to 30% from May 31st to June 30th. The the first one they've note they've listed for the foods is twenty percent off food and non alcoholic beverages at the outdoor kitchens in Epcot. That's super cool. It is, but it, I think it's a weird precedent to set that you can do it. Like I've always assumed that the reason we didn't get an annual pass discount at the carts and the kitchens and all was just because. You know, the computer system and whatever, Wi-Fi, whatever. Right. Just, it was too much of a strain. But if they're going to set that precedent. Mm-hmm. Then they need to do it all the time. I'm not disagreeing. I'm sure they're going to announce further locations, but that's the first ones they have right, So they are clearly trying to, they've just sold a bunch of, a bunch of annual passes and mm-hmm. they are clearly now trying to get all of the pass holders to come to the park in the next month. Yes. So Tony Ann and Dave on the Disney crush podcast. Uh, I am so lost on day yesterday. I think it came out right. Yeah. Yes. Wednesday yesterday. Yes. Uh, we're talking about all these discounts on tickets mm-hmm. and I mean, Disney knows they know how many, park reservations they've got so far and what the trend is and how many hotel reservations they've got so far and what that trend is as you get closer to dates. Mm -hmm. Um, This has got to be what, like the third year in a row that they've done these summertime resort and ticket discounts. Yep. So apparently summers are not as busy as as bad as they used to be, I guess we'll say. Yeah. Because it used to be you don't go, you don't go in the summer because it's crazy busy. Yeah, no, they are clearly here right. trying to get pass holders to come spend money on the parks, right? Which is cool. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously it's not busy because like we were working on just last night, we're working on dining reservations for our Fourth of July trip, and I mean there were restaurants that you normally can't get anyways were available. Yeah, I have to be honest with you. I, I was trying to drive, and I wasn't paying a ton of attention to the ones you were saying. California but Grill had, was available. Yeah, I know. We had an option for California Grill. Yeah, for July 1st, I think. Uh, didn't we, for June 30th, get the Fantasmic yes. dining package? Yes. At? Um, Mama. Mama Melrose, because we've never eaten there. Right. and And to be honest with you... um. All right, so there are some restaurants that I don't go to because I'm like, I don't know really anything about this, but it's going to cost us $200. So we'll just go somewhere else because we know it. Right. Or friends of ours who we trust have said, oh, you got to go here. Yes. But we've never been to Mama Melrose. Mm Mm-hmm. But I'm sure it'll be okay. And you're really paying for... The reserve seating to Fantasmic anyway. Correct. So I felt like it was a good opportunity to try it. Right. Although I have heard good things about it, I think. Yes. 
Um, so that's cool. Mm-hmm. But but yeah. pretty much everything I've tried to go look for other than Tusker House, it's the only one I, could, I was having trouble finding. Literally every other restaurant was available. Yeah, well, Tus- Tusker House is, you know, character dining and buffet. So right. kind of best of both of Disney. Right. Um, but that means 4th of July week, dining less than 60 days. Friday of, right? Yeah. Less, yeah, less Friday than, of 4th of July weekend. Mm-hmm. I was able to find pretty much everything. And even on the 1st at Epcot, pretty much everything was available. On a Saturday of 4th of July week. Right, right. So that kind of tells you. I don't know. I just feel like dining reservations have been available everywhere for like a while now. Yeah. Maybe not the exact one restaurant, but I just don't feel like it's what it was before COVID, like at all. Yeah. Or before COVID, you better be on at six o'clock at 60 days. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, you are not getting it, period. Right. I remember when we were planning our 20th, we were like fighting trying to get those reservations. You know. Yes, but. Yes, but. Yes, but. Like, we didn't know crap about Disney. No, we didn't. Back then. No, it's only been five years, but comparatively, we did not know what we were doing. Right. But, there we go. All right. Magic Band Plus, to be known as Disney Band Plus, is now available for select Disney Cruise Line guests to purchase online before their upcoming sailings. This will be available for Disney Wish sailings beginning June 12th. I think it's very cool. Um, I was shocked that we had to carry that card around. Yeah. All week, weekend, whatever it was we were on the, yeah, weekend mm-hmm. that we were on the ship. Like, I was shocked by that. It was surprising. Um, Especially on the new ship. That was surprising. Yeah, and especially because if you're doing door locks, mm-hmm. point of sale purchase. Right. And photo pass. You got to touch Yep. Anyway, so it's not like it's not like you know ride photos where they have to have like wireless capability, right? So I was shocked that that we had to carry that card around and couldn't just put some on our wrist and wear it, mm-hmm. which is what we did on the Star Cruiser, right? You know, never took it off. But it wasn't it wasn't a plus. It was just the two. Oh, yes, but right. Um, but the same thing. There wasn't anything on there where it had to be. You know, catching you as you went by a camera kind of deal. Yeah. Now, it does say it's not everyone that's going to be available. So, I'm wondering if they're doing it based on Castaway castaway Key numbers. Um, that something. would make sense as a way to start it out. Right. Or, you know, I mean, or concierge level or whatever. Right. You know. They showed pictures of them. One of them is actually a Disney cruise ship. It's really pretty cute. Oh yeah, I bet. Yeah. So well, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that just makes things it makes more sense. Way, way easier. Mm-hmm. Um. So this actually was big news, um, at least in Central Florida. Mm-hmm. Because it sets precedent for other other surrounding counties too. Right. Um the Reedy Creek Fire Department, I guess. Late last week or very early this week, um, signed off on a new employment contract between the union and the district. Mm -hmm. It's going to increase their staffing, um, new equipment. They're getting new ambulances and a staffed ladder truck. Which is very cool. Um, That's a big deal when you got a Skyliner flying over one of your buildings. Right. um, That, you know, could one day require an evacuation of some type. Mm Mm-hmm. And it literally goes right over the fire station. Um, they got pretty good raises. Man, the, the EMTs and paramedics got big raises. Yeah. Um, 
the the raises for firefighters it's a significant number now but the percentage of the increase was not as much it brought the two levels closer together and the EMTs and paramedics got a good chunk of change yeah. out of this. Yeah. Is this something that has been an issue between the firefighters union and the district for mm-hmm. several years Right about lack of staffing, lack of equipment. So this is a huge deal. Yes, it is. You know, um, the firehouses are real nice. They're gorgeous. Because you know, they're Disney buildings. Right. But the stuff inside the firehouses weren't great. Yes. And, and um, so this is a big deal. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, because <laughs> I have friends that do this in Hillsborough County. Mm-hmm. Um, firefighters are starting at 65 grand a year. And I think EMTs and medics at 54. Right. Um, Running into fires. <laughs> right, but um, I mean that's pretty good. That's a living wage for sure. Oh yeah, and they weren't making that uh, last week, so right. um, that's cool. Yeah. And and I mean that just sets a precedent for Orange, Osceola, Polk. Mm-hmm. You know all yeah. the surrounding counties. Yeah, which is good. It's needed. It is. So that's a good deal. Yes, it is. So congratulations to the Reedy Creek Fire Department yes. or the Central Florida Tourism District Fire Department or whatever they're called. Oh, their whatever sign, they their will sign be still says Reedy Creek, so that's what I want to call them. Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, but yeah, congratulations. Yes. So I know, I know that's just been, if you just Google Reedy Creek Fire Department, you can go back and see several years of articles about them complaining so right they are very happy now i know and we are happy for them they yeah, deserve for it sure yeah oh uh, there's dvc news huh a little bit Dis- the villas at disneyland hotel will ultimately contain up to 344 separate villas uh, but not of all of them will be initially available for booking using disney vacation club points and that's because they declare groups of rooms right. as they go. Like they still haven't declared all of Riviera. Riviera. Right. Um, a high percentage, but they haven't declared all of it. So until that point, um, if they declare a hundred rooms, then there are a hundred rooms of the hotel available for DVC points. Right. Not 344 on day one. Mm -hmm. So the initial declaration for the villas at Disneyland Hotel is a total of 61 rooms, eight duo studios, 48 dedicated studios, one one one-bedroom, one two-bedroom lock-off. That's because they have one one (laughs) one-bedroom. Two dedicated two-bedrooms and one grand villa. Yeah, because those duo studios are basically like tower studios at Riviera. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, there's a Steamboat Willie themed splash pad coming to the villas at Disneyland Hotel. That is so cool. That is super cool. Why do they get everything cool out there? <laughs> I, you That's know, fine. I don't know where you'd put it. No, I don't know where you put it here, here, but it just, but I mean, you could put it at Saratoga. You could put it at yeah. Key West, whatever it's, it's black and white Mickey. You could put it wherever you wanted to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, not related to Disneyland, but over here on the East Coast of the country. Uh, beach Club guest room renovations at the Beach Club Villas are set to resume later this summer with an estimated fall 2023 completion date, which means it's paint and sheets. Yeah. Um, and maybe Murphy beds, hopefully. Hopefully. Those Murphy beds are great. They are very comfortable. They're very comfortable. I mean, because it's a regular mattress, but then you also have a good sofa that you just don't f- sink completely into in. You know? And if you have to work from or do school from a hotel room, right? those coffee tables with the raising top, 
Mm-hmm. Or like super cool to sit on the sofa and use your laptop. Just saying. Yes. We've recorded from there too. Uh, we have more than once. Mm-hmm. So uh, Beach Club, Beach Club is a little tired. It needs renovations. Yeah. So that's awesome. It's very good. Um, it's time for Scott on Scott. Let's <gasps> check out Scott Custon's feed. You need you need a like an intro to that. I do. do, 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 do. <laughs> um, here's one thing he's got. Full details on the Figment mag- Magnet, because I know people are excited about these. Oh, people are going crazy for it already. Yeah, I don't know that I love the art. I don't, it's, um, not, it's not my favorite, but I'll still go get it. Somebody, maybe our friend Chris Futrell, said in one of our chats yesterday that it looks like clip art. <laughs> like clip art? Yeah, like if you clip arted, yeah. like... Find me a draw it dragon, like just Googled that, like free clip art. Like it looks like the kind of thing you would get pop up. Yeah. Well, I like Figment the way Figment is on the ride. Yeah. I, think I the, also like the Dream Finder. Yes, I like the Dream Finder. I, think I love Eric Idle, but I like the Dream Finder better. Yeah, I thought the paintbrush was a little weird. I'm not quite sure. Uh, well, there's that one scene. Oh, that's true. But and yeah. He just doesn't look like, I mean, I know he's figment, but he doesn't look like figment that I think of figment. No, he doesn't. But you know what? Neither does all the Mickey Mouse art. Yeah. So that's what they're into right now. And that's fine. Yeah. Um, so the annual pass holder exclusive magnets will be available at Creation Shop May 31st to June 30th from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. Of course, the disclaimer to enter Epcot, you will need a valid admission and theme park reservation for Epcot on the same day. Or you may visit Epcot after 2 p.m. without theme park reservations subject to blackout dates. Mm -hmm. Reservations are limited, subject to availability and applicable pass blackout dates. Um, Just like it's been, each pass holder must be uh, present and show their annual pass, valid annual pass card linked magic band or Disney magic mobile pass and a government issued photo ID. One magnet per pass holder while supplies last. (laughs) Not responsible for any lost, stolen or damaged magnets. (laughs) So put them on your car at your own risk. Yes. Which is why I don't put them on the car, which I just don't put magnets on cars. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, you gotta get it. It'll look good on the fridge with all the other ones. Yeah. No virtual queue for it though this time. No, well they didn't do it, they didn't do it for the mini one. Right. Right. Um, but it went very quickly. Oh, here's some stuff we've been talking about. <laughs> See, sometimes you gotta click the thread. Okay. Um we talked already about the pass holder discount. What does this say? From May 31st to June 30th, annual pass holders will get 20% off select outdoor kitchens. We talked about that. Yep. Um, but this is something that has been a topic of discussion as far as uh, the pass holder lounge or whatever. So during the pass holder, uh, VI pass holder days, pass holders will get a reserved place to cool off and take a break inside Sunshine Seasons oh. in the Land Pavilion at Epcot. Delight and refreshing treats available for purchase during Sunshine Seasons operating hours, such as a spark of grape shake, grape guava passion, passion fruit, orange and lime juice, I guess. I don't know. Raspberry lemonade tart. Shortbread filled tart with lemon mousse, raspberry jam, and raspberry mousse. Um, we haven't eaten in there in a while, and so I don't know if those are exclusive, like pass holder offerings, or just regular menu stuff that they're telling us about. I'm not sure, but I I have a question in regards to that. Mm-hmm. So the seating area. So if you just you weren't a pass holder and you wanted to go get food at Sunshine Seasons, are they blocking off the area to sit? So you have to go figure out somewhere else? Uh, that is an excellent question. I do not know that yet. Okay. Um, also, 
Uh, if I'm going to be there, I will go next door to the Imagination Pavilion and go to the DVC lounge and get free Coca-Cola products. Yes. And snack. Yes. And I believe so. we're going there after um, after our tour on the 2nd. Yeah. With our friends. Um, this is cool about that make a wish thing. What's it called? Once upon a wish party. Yes, one upon, once upon a wish. A special princess themed ball just for wish families to be held during World Princess Week, August twentieth to twenty sixth. Mm-hmm. There will be tea and treats, character meets and greets, and wish kids visiting from all across the country will be proclaimed royalty for the evening. Oh, that's cool. That is awesome. God bless them. On both sides, Disney mm-hmm. for doing it, and of course the those wish families. Yep. Um, this was from twelve hours ago. Mister Gustin was retweeting what appears to be a test of some new drones above Universal Studios Hollywood. Test some videos of that. You know, we went to see the drone show at Disney Springs back we had, whenever that was, we and it rained, to. and they canceled it. And we went on the last day. Yeah. And I cannot believe they haven't come back. I know. I mean, they're doing them all at Disneyland Paris. Um, I'd rather see that at Epcot than Epcot Forever. Uh, yeah. So, just saying. I know. They can do it in Disneyland Paris. Uh, I wonder where this is. Oh. Pixar Place Hotel at Disneyland Resort. Later this summer, overnight guests can splish and splash at an all-new water play area inspired by Finding Nemo, where the fan-favorite fish and his friends frolic aside alongside families. Will include a 186-foot-long crush water f- slide. Wow. Wow. That's at Disneyland? Uh, yeah, Pixar Place. Hmm. Yeah, so Okay, anyway That's it for uh, Scott Gustin For this week Well, That's it for you, the Scott on Scott For Scott on Scott, yes Yes So um, <laughs> So We didn't go to Disney No, we didn't Well, we, t- we slightly considered it But it had been a very long week already and originally, well, and you had stuff to do, and you weren't going to get home until noon or one or whatever it was going to be, and then to drive over there would just yeah. be not good at that right. time of day. Right, it would take us two hours to get there. Yeah, so we decided mm-hmm. it was the last weekend of the Food and Wine Festival at Bush Gardens, Tampa, which happens to be like two miles from our house. Yeah, I know. So it made it very convenient. Yes. Um, so we went to try Food and Wine Festival. Mm-hmm. Now, let's just start off with it is not <laughs> Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. No. You know, but they had some cool stuff. They did. The first thing they had that was super cool was a prepaid lanyard mm-hmm. that is apparently good for the entire length of the festival, because we saw people that were like getting their third one finished off. Yeah, because it started March 10th and ended May 21st. Yeah. So, and they had like a complete menu change for May versus April. Right. Um, and, and then a complete menu change on the latter part of May, too. Yeah. Okay. So, it was a very um, Latino Yes. At the end of May. But that's, you know, that's the month we're in. Right. So that makes sense. Um, All right. So the prepaid lanyard. Mm -hmm. They had two options. $70 for 10. It's a punch card. Right. Or $85 for 15. So seven bucks a pop for food and drinks. Um, That included alcoholic beverages. Yes. Well, Beer, wine, or whiskey. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but also as a pass holder, if we'd gone up to the guest relations and you bought the 15 as a platinum pass holder, we would have been able to get 18 for the price of 15. Right. But it was still it came out to seven bucks a piece, basically. Mm-hmm. Right. Actually, 85 for 15, even less than that. Right. But we, we were there on the last day. We're like, well, we're not going to get through 15. So. No. Um, but we did get through 10. <laughs> they had they had zero care about us sharing it. Yeah. Like, yeah, it well, was, you know, they, it, well, the the app said it was $70 per person. Oh. But it was okay. $70 per card. Right. So that's super cool, and I wish Disney would do that. Yes. But the discount was crazy. So the very first place we went... Um, was what used to be the hospitality house where when Anheuser Busch owned it, they had samples. Yeah, free samples mm-hmm. of just about anything that maybe everything that mm-hmm. Anheuser Busch made at the time. Right, and uh, you could get three a day, which really meant you get three a day from each bartender. Right, <laughs> and shift change. Right, right. <laughs> um. But we went in there. It is now a, they called it some kind of brew house. Um, it didn't have a ton. They maybe had six or eight beers on tap. Yeah. And then I guess they had a liquor bar. Oh, yeah. They had a full bar. Yeah. So for the wine fe- food and wine festival, they had um, at that place. Here we go. So your options for there, um, there was no food. But yeah, there was. They had this encebolado, which is a popular rich stew with white fish, vegetables, yucca root, and pickled onions. Mm-hmm. Sounds good if you like fish. Um, they had a Sauvignon Blanc from Australia, Shiraz from Australia, Red Blend Grand Barossa Valley. Some kind of blend uh, and a rotating wine. Those were all ten ninety nine glass. Mm-hmm. And then they had the beer. Or for thirteen ninety nine, they had the Michelada, which was a Modella Especial served over ice, topped with tomato juice, lime, Worcestershire, soy, and hot sauce. So a Bloody Mary, but with a beer. Right. That was thirteen ninety nine. Um, but our punch card <laughs> got all that. And the and the food thing was thirteen ninety nine. Right. They also had beers. And they had regular beers on tap. But those were on the punch card. Were like a were six ounce pour. Seven ounce. Technically, a se- okay. said seven ounce. It didn't look seven ounces, but yeah. So those were small, but still seven dollars for right. theme park beer beers. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want to say those are like that size is probably like six fifty. It. Disney during food and wine? Yeah, probably. Um, But it's cool. Mm -hmm. So we got a table. It was air conditioned. Yep. Bathroom nearby. Mm -hmm. If you wanted another one, the bartenders told you once you went through the initial line, you just came back up to the bar. And they had people sitting at the bar. Like there were people sitting at the bar all day. But you had people just sitting at the bar getting bar service around that. And they didn't say you can only get two. Uh, no, they did not. <laughs> <laughs> because I went up and we had five punches left because we'd used five of them already. Yeah. And I went up and I said, I just want to just use all the punches now. I really don't want to have to go back through. And she's like, what do you want? <laughs> it was not, it was, it, she didn't care. No, they didn't. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, we did went to one of the booths. I'll put the picture on the post when I do it on Facebook. Yeah. Um, They had like a chimichurri beef skewer, Mm -hmm. which was a piece of chimichurri beef on a skewer. And then they gave you three of those. They were good. They were very tasty and Mm -hmm. very tender. It was well cooked. Yes. Um, And those were a punch. Those were a punch. Those were a punch. Yeah. Each. Yeah. I was very happy with those. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got to see kangaroos. I forgot about them. Yeah. Walked all through the kangaroo exhibit. Man, they must have had, I don't know, 30 kangaroos in there. Yeah. And a couple of them were actually born, were raised there. 
Yeah, they had white ones and gray ones and... And then they had the they little had a bunch. Ones. What were the little the wallabies? Wallabies, that's what it was. Um they had a whiskey booth that apparently changed like throughout the festival. Mm-hmm. Um they had Old Forester or they had tequila. And it was thirteen ninety nine for a single neat. Mm-hmm. Pour or twenty one ninety nine for basically four shots. Yeah. Um. So we did that. The twenty one ninety nine taster was not on the punch card. We had to pay for that. That was okay. But we got twenty percent off as pass holders. Right, and we got that inside too when I bought the extra beers. Right. Right. You got your twenty percent discount yeah. on. As pass holder on that too. Yeah. So twenty. So Bush Garden Sea World gives you twenty percent discount on food and alcohol. And alcohol. Yeah. Super cool that. So they were doing Old Forester bourbon. Mm-hmm. They had four different ones. I uh, believe you took the picture on I that. I did. One. Um. Let me find it here. If it's here, hopefully. So we got the 1897, which is, um, the 1897, which is a 50% of 50% alcohol, Mm -hmm. hundred proof. The 1870, which was 46 and a half percent. The 1910, which was 45%. And then the prohibition one. Yeah, the, I think it was 1920. Um, oh, I have it here. Uh, yeah, the 1920 prohibition style, which is 115 proof. Actually, that was my favorite one. Um, it was probably the smoothest of all of them. It was yeah. delicious. It was delicious. But it was super cheap. Yeah. So Bush Gardens has really become local. Like, mm-hmm. I felt like everybody in there was probably a pass holder. Oh, yeah. But if you like roller coasters and or animals, mm-hmm. it's still super cool and it's just not crowded. Yeah. The parking lot made it look like it was really crowded, though. Well, the parking lot's tiny. Yeah. So the whole the whole property is on, like, 75 acres. That yeah. includes across the street parking. Right, and the park itself is surrounded by roads. So right, but when you consider that Disney World is twenty seven thousand acres, and this is seventy five, mm-hmm. um, they are maximizing their use of space. Yes, it was very cool. Um, I liked the way they did the booths mm-hmm. a lot. So they would have a booth that had uh, two or three food items. And bottled water or soda or whatever Mm -hmm. in bottles. And then the next booth would have a a wine drink, an alcohol drink, a beer. Mm -hmm. Um, And and they all kind of related. So it may be from all of them from Australia or all of them from Ecuador or Mm -hmm. whatever. Um, But it was very cool the way they did that because... I felt like it cut the lines in half. You didn't right. have people, this guy waiting for food, and then the next person just wanted a Bloody Mary or, right. you know. So I thought that was a really cool way. The it, biggest takeaway, though, was that prepaid lanyard. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Next year, we'll just do that, like, day one of the festival. Yeah, well, and we'll go in and buy it because, like I said, you could get the... Extra yeah. punches. I, there was that girl. Line. We were walking up to the one booth, and there was a girl there. Her friend was taking a picture of her. She just finished her third punch card. No, in fairness, I mean it was two two and a half months. Right, so, right, right. But but I mean, but yeah. it was a great deal. It was seven bucks an item. Yeah, for, and everyone we saw was like groups of like four or six people all walking around. Mm-hmm. You know, doing this together. You well, know, the guy in line behind us at the uh, bourbon tasting mm-hmm. was like, "So, what do they have this week?" Yeah, because you know, last like, week it was different. Yeah, yeah, they he came, they came every weekend and checked it all out. Right. So it was very cool. That was our first time that we had been to one of their festivals, other than the Christmas thing. Yeah. 
they do a Christmas village every year. Yeah, which is very cool. Yeah. Um, it was really cool. Yeah. I mean, I would, there was the new ride, the Serengeti, whatever it is. Um, I can't, that new ride. I can't remember what it was. I was good. I wanted to go on it, but I'm like, eh, once we started just drinking, I was like, yeah, I don't want to go on it. Uh, yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> Serengeti flyer. That's what it's called. Okay. We did the train. We did do the train. It was very different than it was in the early 90s, but it was very cool. Mm-hmm. It's a, I love the train. We did go shopping. Uh, we did. So just like SeaWorld, they have a Guy Harvey store. Mm-hmm. And those of you who know me um, know that I pretty much exclusively wear long sleeve, uh, like the Columbia PFG shirts, mm-hmm. you know, SPF 50 Long sleeve shirts. Right. And yes, I live in Florida. Um, so the Guy Harvey store, I got one of those. You got one. Yep. Yours was uh, $45. Mine was 55 Right. Mine isn't the Columbia thing, but it's still real smooth. Oh, you got a... It's, it's kind of a cotton... It's a cotton poly blend. That's right. You didn't get the same type of shirt. You were, but then you changed your mind because the shirt was cute. Yeah. So mine was 55 bucks. We got 20% off. Mm-hmm. We got your cotton-ish shirt and mm-hmm. my SPF shirt. All right. Um, $31 for yours, thirty eight fifty for mine. Right. Um. SeaWorld Bush Gardens is still doing that weird 5% surcharge because of inflation. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's okay. It was a couple of bucks. And and funny enough. <laughs> oh, no, it was not discounted. I thought it was. No, yeah, it wasn't. But it was $79.01 for two of those shirts. Yeah. Which is why I noticed that like half the park was walking around wearing Guy Harvey shirts and hats. Right. <laughs> Especially the hats. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it it did get sunny, and then it, you know, because then it got overcast, and then sunny. So, I mean, they're nice. They're nice hats. I'll tell you one thing about Bush Gardens. There is a ton of shade, except for one area of the park, the Timbuktu area. There's no shade. Oh yeah. Um, but that's not a big area of the park. It's where there's like three rides and the game, and area. obviously the savanna. Yeah, the savanna's hot. Yes. I mean, there's trees all over for the animals. You right, just but, aren't mm, on them if you're on that tour. Right. But there is a ton of shade around that park. Mm-hmm. Plenty of shade. Yes. So it is not, um, as they say, Animal Kingdom hot. Right. It's not Hollywood Studios hot. Right. But uh, I really enjoyed it. And like I said, every time we do go, we're like, Man, this is right around the house, and it's really fun. I know. Let's go back to Disney for the next six months. <laughs> but it was a very good time, uh-huh. and it's it's an hour most of the time an hour. from Disney property. Yeah. So, you know, I know Kevin, our friend Kevin Curtis Allen, mm-hmm. is uh, planning on making the trek over. They've apparently got buses yes. or vans or whatever. Transportation, yeah, basically. that yeah. run from there to here and vice versa. Yeah, so he's gonna plan. We already already planning that when he comes over here, we're all doing bush gardens together. Yeah, it's worth a, it's worth a trip. Mm-hmm. And it's um, I don't know what it costed for a day pass, but it's not one hundred and sixty nine dollars. No, they have specials going on right now because they have special going on right yeah. now. And. uh Quite often, annual pass holders get free tickets for guests. Yes. So. Yeah. Just throwing it out there for those who know us that want to go to Bush Gardens. I know. <laughs> or SeaWorld. We will take it under con- your requests under consideration. Yes. Um, that's all I got for this week. I just thought it was fun. It was fun. It, it was, was worth telling people about. Yeah, it was relaxing and it was just kind of, you know, we just wandered around. And by the way, we have a little large percentage of our listening audience that is in the greater central Florida area that can drive themselves over. Yes. So thought we'd throw it out there for everybody. It was fun. It was a good time. Mm-hmm. Now I wish, wish we'd had gone over and tried SeaWorlds, but we didn't. Yeah, I know. 
But they'll have another, they have the summer nights thing. They will. I'm sure the Festival of the Arts is coming up. <laughs> no, but they have a summer nights thing. So they have stuff going on at night. They do, yeah. Um, they I think had, it starts tomorrow. I don't remember who it was. They had some dude singing some concert. It, it, I even told you, I looked, they had posters up or banners up with the list of artists. Yeah. And I was like, so it's the Eat to the Beat series. Hoobastank, Air Supply. <laughs> I it can't was remember somebody. who else. Those were those were two like in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, that had performed. So, um, so they're just making the circuit. Yeah. So as soon as Hanson shows up, we'll know they've made it. <laughs> <laughs> or the M eighties. Oh, M eighties. We're going to be there at every show, <laughs> right? If the game M eighties show up, um, I think there's an actual M eighties on this coast. Well, we need to find out where they're at. <laughs> there's one in Cape Coral. There's one in Orlando. Funny, if you Google M80s Florida, uh, like the fourth thing that comes up is the spasmatics Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. That is funny. I think there's one. I think there's one on this coast. I may be wrong about that, but I think there's one on the West Coast somewhere. Okay. So anyway, that's all we got. Oh, and there's one in Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> but we've talked about Pittsburgh. Yeah. We've talked about it's a franchise name. I know, but there's it's so much fun. At, at least the one in Orlando is a very good band. They're very good. So. Very entertaining. So Yeah. I'm sad that they're playing tonight and we're going tomorrow. I know. Um that's all I got for this week. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for listening again. We're having some growth in the podcast. That's super cool. Yippee. We had somebody from Egypt listen to us. What? South Korea. That's very cool. It is. It's super groovy. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> as always, we're on Instagram at Mickey File underscore podcast. There'll be stuff on there this week. There'll also be stuff in our Facebook group, the Mickey File Improvement District. Uh, you can expect uh, between now and 4th of July, there'll be some lives coming at you. Oh, yeah. Um, especially if we can get that wait list for the concierge level at Animal Kingdom to come through. <laughs> <laughs> what, the one for tomorrow we're trying no, to get? the one for 4th of July. Oh, yeah. Uh, podcast is available everywhere you can find podcasts, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, uh, whatever. Amazon Alexa. You can just say, hey, play the Mickey File podcast. It'll come up on your Alexa. It's what my nephew does. Apparently, in every room. Apparently in every room of the house. My sister's sick of hearing my voice. <laughs> she. That's the funny part is she said she's sick of yours. She didn't say she was sick of mine. Well, I mean, that's... For one thing, 52 years of mine, but. Yeah. True. Well, that's not true. 49 and yeah. a half years of mine because she's younger. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, the best way to support the show, uh, subscribe, like, follow, check mark, whatever it is on your podcatcher of choice. Um, and if you're inclined, um, a five star review would help out quite a bit yes it would um or just the easiest thing you could do uh tell somebody you know share the link on your facebook page or just tell somebody hey if you're looking for a podcast yeah um comes out every week not always on time but that's my fault comes out every week <laughs> and if you want to get in touch with us um the one thing that we do check all the time is uh, our email address, Mickey File Podcast, all one word at gmail.com. Goodbye. Good night, everybody. Thank you.